Hey y'all, it's Chloe and we're back with another video. Ready to Love Season 9, Episode 2. I need more. I need more in-depth conversations. I feel like everything is so sexual. And I don't know what it is about the, you know, about when people start dating that they need to really like jump into like their sexual preference and what they like and what turns them on. Like things like that, I feel like it's just doing a lot, okay? We found out a lot of unnecessary things about these people. Everybody likes sucking toes. Everybody got fetishes. People want threesomes. Like it's just a lot, okay? <laughs> Skinny dipping, new beaches, like come on. Come on, what's the three words that come to your mind when you think about sex? Like, Jesus Christ, can we work our way into it? Y'all just want to jump right into the sack, right into it? Okay, let's just do it. Let's get into this review. But before we do, I need you guys to do me a favor. Sit back, relax, watch the video through. And if you like what you see and you like what you hear, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you are one of my lovely members or subscribers, hey y'all, how y'all doing? Let's just do it. So, we meet Vanessa. Vanessa's 35. She's a flight attendant and she wants to explore more black love because she's used to dating white men. Pause. Now, if this was a man, if this was a man, y'all be like, he like white women. He like white women. No, 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 no. So how y'all feel about that? How Tell me, how y'all feel about that, okay? She said that she wants to connect with someone who's more revolutionary. I'm like, girl, this is like drastic. You go from dating white men to now power to the people just like that, switch overnight. I don't know about Vanessa and her preference because if this was a man, and I have to say it's truthful, that it just seems kind of strange that all of a sudden now she wanted to dip into the chocolate when she was preferring the white men's before. Nothing wrong with that. At least she's being honest. Now, girl, let me tell you. Let me tell you now. Don't bring that up to them black men. Don't do it. <laughs> don't bring them up to that. Don't bring it up to them black men. That's all I'm saying, okay? We meet Alonzo. Alonzo's 35, and he's an insurance adjuster. He said the things that you experience him when dating is fun, spontaneous, and he's a closeted freak, and he's cute. <sighs> Here we go. Here we go. Closeted freak. Okay. We need to know these things when dating, obviously, right off the jump. Okay. He, he said it's hard dating because they see the dreads and then he's tall. Oh, you mean you giving off like F boy bobs? Is that, if that's what it is? Because, baby, at least call them locks. I mean, I would say locks. If I was trying to present myself a certain way, but he said dreads and you heard, and you know what they said, them dreadheads do it the best. Okay. That's what I heard on the streets. That's what I heard. Now, Patricia is 35 and she says that Alonzo is looking good and she likes her man taller and he's definitely that, okay? She said the type of man she wants to attract is one who has goals, ambition, uh, discipline. Those are the type of men that get that yes daddy out of her, okay? She wants a man's man. Okay, girl. <laughs> okay. These women coming in hot and heavy, I'm telling you, okay? So then we meet Chad, who's 47, and he's a data analysis manager. He said walking into the mixer, he was like, 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 heart, heart, heart. Too many dating apps. Way too many dating apps is that's how you explain when you walk into the mixer what you was thinking about the women. Because, sir, no. I don't know. I just feel like we're missing something. We're missing something. I don't know what it is, but we're missing something, okay? We get Maya. She's 30. She's a healthcare IT consultant. She says that she kissed a lot of frogs in her days, and she's ready for her prince charming. Girl, be disappointed, because you ain't going to find him here. I, I promise you, you won't. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So we meet Laylin. She's 40. She looks really good for her age. I'm not going to lie. She's in cybersecurity. She said that she feels like when you look for the good, you attract the good. So she carries a list around things she tries to be intentional about when trying to attract her partner. Throw it away. Throw the list away. Because if you've been carrying it around for almost 40 years and we still haven't attracted, throw the list away and start over. It's not working for you. I'm just saying, okay? But anyway, she says on this list, it's, um, on this list, she has unconditional, spiritual, healthy, financially free, and someone who doesn't mind washing hair. Oh, and they have to have fresh breath. Girl, you need a list to tell you that you want those in a, you want those qualities in a man. I'm just sitting here like, it gotta be hard. It, it gotta be hard out here because that's just the bare minimum at 40 we should be looking for like i shouldn't have to tell you to brush your teeth you know what i mean like i shouldn't i should expect you to be financially um in a financially good space by now just some of the things i'm sitting here like girl we don't need a list for that but if you wrote it then hey it is what it is 
um, when Eliza saw Leilin, he was like, where the hell have you been all day? Like, I've been looking for you. I was like, okay, instant attraction. But I'm not surprised because she is very beautiful. So I know that the men were going to be looking at her, okay? She said it's too soon to say if any of the guys will fulfill her list, but she's looking forward to find out. Throw the list away. Girl, you don't need it. It's basic. <laughs> Throw it away, okay? So then Jonathan, who is 36 and he owns a recycling center, says that he really likes Laylin. He says he likes a woman who is beautiful, nice smile, good hair. Pause, 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 pause. I hate the good hair. Like, all hair is good. Shout out to Nicki Minaj. What do you mean good hair? So what you saying that somebody who have locks or afro don't have good hair? I need context because that already makes me think of texturism, colorism. Those type of things all come into play when people start saying good hair. But I'm going to let you slide because you're a man and you probably don't know any better. And that's just how you've been conditioned to think, okay? He says he likes her based off looks until you open your mouth. Pause. He didn't mean it like that. Sir, we didn't think of it like that. You meant it like that. Because I didn't think when you said it since she opened her mouth. I knew exactly what you meant when you said it. You took us somewhere else. I'm just saying. He says he feels he's ready to love because he's been down this road before. And he has been and he was married for two and a half years and he has one child. He says that he has a lot to offer and whoever she is will too. Okay, Jonathan, if you feel like you got a lot to offer, we're going to have to see because I want to see what you bring to the table, sir. Okay? Jonathan already gave Laylin a nickname. He said he's going to call her Lala. I said, already? Y'all doing a cute little nickname exchange? Okay, now. Tommy shows up and he's like, I know y'all looking around for the rest of the men's and women's, but um, they not here because they had a mixer yesterday and that's where they met up. But don't worry, y'all all gonna be able to meet everyone. But today I need you guys to really focus on each other, okay? He tells them that the men have the power, so the women really need to, you know, get to know, know them very well because at the end of the night, one of these ladies will be eliminated. So Rashina, who is 38, a salon owner, says, nobody wants to go home on a first night, okay? She's ready to be in a relationship. So it is what it is. So they have to really get into the things of the things. Now listen, Rashina, you're absolutely right. We talk about this every year, how it just don't make no sense to send somebody home on the first night. But so far, I feel like they've been sending the right people home, okay? Because what's his name? DeMont, DeMonte, whatever his name was last episode, it was time for him to go. So I'm not too mad at the decisions they making so far, okay? Um, so then Lamar was like, when I found out one of the ladies was going home, I was so happy it ain't going to be me. <laughs> so now you can do the bare minimum, sir? Because something tells me that if the woman had the chance, Lamar, it would be you. Mm -hmm. Something's telling me that. I'm just saying, based on the things that we learned about Lamar this episode, I think he would have been going home if it was up to the woman. He says it takes a lot to be with him because he's outspoken. But he also thinks that women like the transparency from the beginning. So his strategy is to just be himself. It's going to get you sent home. It's going to get you sent home. And I'm not mad at it. And I'm not mad at it because I feel like, like I said, it's looking like you came for hookups. It's definitely given I came for hookups and I didn't come here for like love. Rasheed says that Lamar is more of her type she would go for with the full beard and, you know, the shirt open. It's giving real Miami Vice, okay? She's like, I see you, Lamont. I see you. So Lamar's talking to Rasheed and Vanessa and he asks them, are they spontaneous? And they're like, um, no, not really, okay? He was like, but what if I was like, let's just go skip he's in right now in the pool so Rashida was like I mean I might do it so maybe I am a little spontaneous and Vanessa was like immediately no like sir no so then he was like what if I took you to a new beach for the first date sir what are your intentions at this point now I'm not saying that if y'all into the new beach don't go, um not to go but what I'm saying is you just met these women and you're already talking about taking the clothes off I'm with Vanessa Vanessa was like if you off, if you try to take me to a new beach on the first date, then you don't know me well enough. And that's the issue. He don't want to get to know anybody well enough. He wants to get your clothes off. That's what I got from it. Rasheen was like, he lost me at the daggone new beach. I was, I was going forward with the skinny dipping for a second, but the new beach kind of threw me. And I feel like he's playing these games where he's trying to see who he could F along the way. I'm sorry. I have to just call it how I see it, and that's how I'm saying it. So then Jonathan said that the main girl that caught his eye was Maya, okay? 
He said she's very sweet and she has a beautiful smile. She's just sexy, just how he likes it, okay? He tells her about his marriage and how he, it ended because they had communication issues. Did we fix them? If the marriage ended because y'all had communication issues, did we fix them? That's the question. He asked her what she was looking for in a guy. She said she was looking for a husband. She's done playing games. She's looking for someone who really knows how to court a woman. He tells her he learned a lot of his courting from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Martin, and things like that because he didn't really grow up with a lot of self-esteem. And I felt like he was opening up a little bit to her. And I like that about Jonathan. But when I tell y'all that something about Jonathan... I don't like, I feel like if he doesn't find you physically attractive, he's automatically disinterested in anything that you say. A lot of the conversations I felt he was having this whole episode, it seems like once he realized he don't like, he's not attracted to you physically, he kind of X'd you out and no longer was paying attention to half anything you were saying. Maya says she felt the connection with him and he seems very sweet and it doesn't, and it does help that he's tall and dark and handsome. He lets her know that he's liking what they got going on between them in this moment. So, so far, it seems like Maya and Jonathan kind of hitting it off a little bit, okay? And so, Chad, Vanessa, Rasheen, and Patricia are talking about what they do. And Chad was talking about how he likes to create, okay? And Patricia was like, I invented something. So they're like, girl, what you invent? And she was like, I invented a $30,000 toy that does 200 kinkles in one minute before I became abstinent. Where's that though? <laughs> Where you purchased the toy yet? Not for thirty thousand dollars. I'm just curious though, and I think that it's very interesting to find out that Patricia's abstinent. She kind of slid that in there, low key. I'm not gonna hold you. She definitely slid that in there. Rasheen said Rasheen was in a confessional like. Ooh, I'm shocked. I didn't expect that. I'm saying none of us did. We were just sitting about talking about what we do for a living. And what she does for a living don't even have nothing to do with this toy she invented. But baby, if she want us to know, then we know. Okay? Um, so Alonzo is talking to Vanessa and Maya. He's telling them about how in his last relationship, his girlfriend didn't like that he was too friendly. Red flag. Mm-mm. Now, I know y'all gonna be like this. Maybe she was insecure. No. Nope, 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 mm-mm. Friendly, maybe. Flirty, maybe you meant flirty. Because I don't see how being friendly with someone will cause issues in your relationship. I'm just saying. Maya got up to excuse herself. I guess after that, she was like, no, not for me. Not going to do it, okay? So then Alonzo and Vanessa continued to talk, but it was so awkward. It's like the vibe got totally thrown off. And it, I'm assuming it's because that relationship he was talking about, you know, how he was too friendly. And she probably was like, no, I don't, um, no, I won't participate in that. Plus, I, now, maybe I'm reaching, but... Vanessa probably don't see it for Alonzo. He might just be too dark for her. Because to go from the white men all the way to the dark chocolate is an extreme. I'm just, just giving out. I'm just putting that out there. I could be wrong and I could be reaching. I'm just putting it out there to see where it lands, okay? Mm-hmm. So Chad and Rasheen are kicking it, and it seems like he likes her. Um, she tells him how she's a girly girl, like she's into the glitz, she's into the glamour, okay? She's 38, and she's a full-time salon owner. Um, and so in her career, she always has to be done up. She says, I come with the extensions, I come with the lashes, the nails, the makeup. And sometimes that's a lot for men. And sometimes that's a lot for men because a lot of men like natural beauty. That's what they say. They say they want these natural beauty girls, but then they be all over the BBL Instagram models with the filters. So we don't know what they really want at this point, okay? Um, but she also lets us know not to get it twisted. All the things are the things that she do is for enhancement because she's, she's that girl. I said, I know that's right, okay? The makeup, the hair, the nails, that's all for the enhancement because baby... I'm that girl. <laughs> so as Rashina and Chad are talking, they start talking about kids. Okay, of course we know she has kids. She asked him, did he have any kids? And he said, um, currently no. He would have a child that would be 20, his son. Okay, we find out that he lost his child at six months old. And my heart instantly dropped. That is a fear, okay? Um, Because y'all know sis is the thing and stuff like that. And y'all know I'm a twin, right? 
my twin sister died at three months and i lied to y'all now i was talking to my husband about this because y'all know i have a two month old baby and we i was just talking i was just like do you know how hard it would have to be to lose your child at three months six months like that got to be hard because the um, the bond that i've already got with my son i could not imagine i could not imagine so i know that that's something that just weighs on um a parent and he said that was just something he was really never really eager to experience again. And I can understand because that's traumatic. That's an tra traumatic experience that I don't think anyone would want to experience again, okay? He tells her that if he finds love again, then he would be open to having children. But he hasn't found that yet. And I was just thinking to myself like, wow, that was a very vulnerable moment. And Rashina was just happy that he opened up to her and um, told her that. Um, she said she really is like at him like he's top on the list and i was like wow i don't know if that's just something he do um i don't know if he's just open like that or if he felt comfortable enough to tell her that but nonetheless i enjoyed the conversation patrice patricia jonathan and alonzo are talking and they're on the topic of kids okay um and they asked alonzo like do you have any kids and alonzo said no i don't i want to be able to give my wife something that i haven't gave to anyone else I wish, I wish, I wish that this was the mindset that a lot of men had. Because then we would have so many less broken homes and a lot less baby mamas and baby daddy and all the drama in between. Because if you intentionally want to get married and have, start a family, then this is the route to take. Stop having kids with people you have no intention on being with long term. Get married, then have your kids. So I love the fact that he's waiting for the right person. To give his baby soup. <laughs> Patricia's digging Alonzo. She said that she likes them kind of young too, okay? She said she followed the rules her whole life and she's at the point where she just wants to have fun. Fun or find love? Clarify, okay? And she said him being 35 ain't too bad because she's dated younger. And it also doesn't hurt that it comes with the height. And don't get it wrong, he's feeling her too, okay? He said her light skin with the tattoos and everything like that. He pulled his phone out instantly, okay? He said that he felt like he was in a twilight zone. The vibe, the energy was everything, okay? Um, Jonathan and Rasheen are talking and they're having a conversation. And he's like, mm, I don't know if I like Rasheen. He said she's an attractive woman, but I'm just not attracted to her. She's not for me. And this is what I mean by Jonathan and how he shuts off immediately kind of when he doesn't find you to be attractive physically. Um, I feel like the conversation could have been a little bit better if he had somewhat some type of interest. And the only reason why I feel like he didn't even barely try is because he knew that there was no man being eliminated this week. Because honestly, I feel like he would have turned it on if he thought one of the men was being eliminated. That's just how I feel. Tommy shows up and he was like, um, I hope y'all been getting to know each other. And they like, yeah, we've been getting to know each other. We've been going deep. We've been going deep. And he was like, all right, well, it's time to play a game. Y'all want to play a game? Okay. <laughs> so they're playing a game called Good on Paper. You know how you're looking at someone's profile and you like, this too good to be true? Well, it probably is true. He told them this is their chance to see the guy's real profile, the good, the bad, and the all out freaky. So Alonzo is in a confession like, please don't let them bring in my fetishes. Please don't let them bring in my fetishes. I'm like, where are they? What are they that you begging to God that they don't bring them up? Because if you guys were all that, baby, it's giving. <laughs> it's giving some weird stuff. Very. All right. So now the ladies have to guess which fact belongs to which men and whoever wins safe from elimination. First question. This man says he lost himself in a previous marriage trying to please his wife. They all guessed Lamar. And they all was wrong because it was Jonathan. <laughs> Leyland was surprised. Um, she felt like he had a lot of self-esteem. But I'm like, didn't isn't he the same one who said that he grew up, he grew up with a lack of self-esteem? Girl, you better be paying attention if you want to stay. Next question. This man said the reason he doesn't have kids is he want to give his wife something. He hasn't given to anyone else. And they all got that right except for Maya. I said, Maya, girl, where you been at? Because I haven't heard the man say it at least twice. <laughs> Okay, Patrice said she loved that. Shoot, she'll have his babies. <laughs> she sure will. That's what she said. She said, I have his babies. I sure will. I said, girl, pipe down, calm down just a little bit, okay? Next fact, this man feels like too much makeup makes you look like a Muppet. And them long eyelashes makes it look like you're reaching out to scratch them. Who said that? 
Who who said that? Chad said that. Mm -mm. Rashina was like, Ooh, oh no, he's my number one, but we're gonna have to work past it. We're gonna have to work past it. And I was just sitting there like, mm, see, see, see what I mean? Y'all see what I mean? How the men say they want something, but then they go after the total opposite. Because, sir, if you are natural, if you are attracted to the natural beauty and things of the things, how was it that she was kind of like top of your list and y'all was hitting it off so well? I told y'all. I told y'all. But I will say this, Rashina. Don't let a man tell you more than once what he don't like. Don't let a man tell you more than once what he don't like. He already made it very clear that he's not feeling all the glitz and the glamour. And it's very clear that you're not going to change that for him. And I feel like if y'all get into a relationship, he might try to calm it down a little bit. Like, maybe less makeup this time. Or maybe less extensions this time. And then you're going to be unhappy. Okay? Which guy loves thick thighs? Alonzo. Which man likes a woman who is well endowed? Chaz. This guy's craziest sexual encounter is when a woman reached down and touched his gouch. It, they said that's the, right between here, here, and here. So, here? <laughs> But is there anything in, is there anything there? I don't know. I don't know. It's Jonathan, okay? And he said it was strange, weird. I wonder if he liked it. Did you like it, Jonathan? Did you like it, okay? This man likes to push sexual boundaries. He likes threesomes. He likes sex toys. He likes, he's into swinging. Lamar. Pause. Pause, 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 pause. Where they find these men? I was with you. I was I was understanding, you know, maybe the threesomes. I get the sex toys, but baby, swinging? Swinging. Y'all know what swinging is? He's into that. Nobody comes on a dating show looking to be slutted out. I don't know. It's get, <laughs> I really don't know, okay? So at this point, Leyland and... Maya are tied, okay? So for the tiebreaker, the question is, this man learned romance from TV. Jonathan, Maya got that right, so she's safe. She's staying. Um, I think it was very interesting that this time around, the men actually stated all the things that was in the questions. We actually heard these men say this, repeat this, or reiterate this. So I kept an eye out for that because you got to be very careful when it feels like things are being rehearsed and being played out like I'm gonna say I learned romance from I'm gonna say I learned romance from TV because it sounds good you know you know so now that Maya is safe Tommy tells them all to go back because y'all um the night's not over child they go back outside it is nighttime <laughs> I said how long they got these people out there mixing and mangling because <laughs> at what point do we go home so Alonzo is talking to Patricia and Rashina, and he asked them if they had to put um, three words into amazing sex, which words would they choose? This is what I'm saying. Everything was sexual to a certain extent. It's like, do you really want to get to know me or do you really want to know what I like in a bedroom before you learn anything else about me? Okay. So Patricia said, sensual, slow, and gentle. <laughs> Rasheen said she likes slow, passionate and nasty okay and and when she said that patricia was like oh girl <laughs> alonzo was like that's what i was waiting to hear rashina for the win and i'm like exactly like what do y'all want y'all want love or y'all want hookups because if y'all want hookups then this makes perfect sense but if we looking for love why are we leading with sex so then patricia asked him like do you have any queer, weird fetishes or things like that and he was like he like feet so Patricia was like, so are you sucking toes though? And she don't even like getting her toes sucked. So what kind of question was that? Girl, anyway, um, Rasheed said that he likes to rub feet. It's giving my man, my man, my man. <laughs> um, so Chaz said Vanessa caught his eye. And that seems on brand for Chaz, okay? Um, it's because she looks a lot more natural than 
some of the other women, okay? Very beautiful, but a little bit more natural, elegant. He said elegant, so we're going to go with that, okay? So when they're talking, she talks about how important God is in her life and um, how she wants someone who's aligned with the things that she's um, aligned to, someone who's stable, someone who likes to travel, someone who goes to therapy, you know, the things and the things. And he said, I feel like I've been talking to you all night because these are all the things that I've been saying. And I feel like this is on brand for Vanessa because if you go by how the men that she used to date, he's a little closer on the lighter skin trail which is why I felt like she was real detached from Jonathan. I'm just observing what I see. And it's based off the information she gave me. I'm just saying, okay. So when Jonathan and Patricia was talking, Patricia was basically telling him how, you know, she hasn't, she doesn't really trust men and, you know, what happened in her past relationships. And I felt like she was kind of opening up, maybe a little bit too much because you can't tell men you don't trust men and then be up here looking for a man. That was a little weird to me, but I understood it. But you know what? It don't matter because Jonathan wasn't paying attention. He didn't care. Jonathan did not care. He played like he cared. He played into the conversation, but he don't like that girl. He already crossed her off the list. She was never an option, okay? So when Lamar came over there and, you know, she was like, oh, you fit in perfectly because you went to the threesomes because it was three of them or whatever. And she's like, you know, he's like, so you're not into that? She's like, no. And he was like, oh, so are you the possessive territorial type? Sir, just because somebody don't want to have sex with you and somebody else does not make them possessive or territorial. I just don't understand what you are thinking, Lamar? Because they're not into swinging and threesomes. They possessive and territorial. No, some people just don't get down like that. And that's okay. But you can see how he think. I feel like that's a manipulation tool that he's used in the past. Like if a woman don't want to give him threesomes and be swinging and stuff like that, then if she has to be some type of possessive or territorial. And that's a red flag for him. Mm. I feel like he used that line before and I don't like the way it felt when he said it, okay? So I um so the time comes out because it's time for them to, you know, talk about who they like and who they don't like. Ultimately, and I'm not even about to go into all the details of the details because it's really not that hard to get into, okay? They come down to Patricia and Vanessa. I knew this was gonna happen. I knew this was gonna happen because they didn't show Patricia a lot okay we didn't start to see a little bit more patricia um of patricia until the end of the episode and by then we could tell that everybody was kind of like over her okay so i'm not surprised and the thing with vanessa is i didn't see her clicking with a lot of people she just didn't click with a lot of people and i think that's because she doesn't have a lot of experience when it comes to dating a lot of black men Ultimately, when they come back out, it comes down to Patricia, Rasheen, and Vanessa. And I was like, why is Rasheen here? I'm confused because I could have sworn the guys was loving her, okay? Tommy tells her she's safe. Men want to see a little bit more of her, okay? So he lets Patricia know that she's been eliminated. And I knew it. I knew it. But she was really sad. She said she felt like she's ready. I think she is on a path of readiness. Um... Just a little bit more time. I just feel like some of the things that she was saying when she was talking to Jonathan um, about, you know, trusting and things like that don't seem like she was really open. And even Jonathan said it like, mm, she seemed guarded. She's not open. And so in this process, that's not going to work for her, which is why she's going home. And that was episode two of Ready to Love, season nine, episode two. <laughs> y'all get down in those comments and let me know what y'all think. I cannot wait for all of them to come together and really start mixing and mingling so we can see who really starting to build connections because I got a feeling that the people that they picking now, they won't be picking next week. I'm just saying. That's how I feel about this whole situation. That being said, I hope you guys liked the video. If you did not like the video, like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Okay. And I'll talk to you guys next week. Peace.